Hi, my name is Adrian William, and today's video is for all the foreign trained dentists uh, who are planning to apply to CAPID, who are planning to apply for advanced standing programs in the upcoming cycle. So the next cycle for DIA CAPID is starting in March, and this is a time when most of the people are preparing for their application or preparing to apply to schools and gathering everything. So during this video, I'm going to quickly talk to you some considerations, some things you should get prepared for as the cycle is approaching. And along with that, I'll also talk about some specific points that are directly focused on reapplicants, people who have applied in the past and got interviews, got waitlisted or didn't get accepted. I'm going to be sharing some thoughts with you as well that can help you make your profile better during this year's this year. And in and, and the last point, I also want to talk to you how I can help you during this cycle of upcoming 2024 and what would be some different approaches I can assist you with. So starting with the first point that the DIA CAPIT cycle is going to be starting in March. And before that, there are a couple of things you should have done as your homework. Number one thing is that you should have done pass your INBD, you should have uh, done your TOEFL. Again, I encourage everybody in my videos to score as high as possible in your TOEFL because if you score above 105, 110, your chances of getting an invite from the school goes way up. And if you're below 100, it makes things much more difficult. So try, uh, try getting good score in TOEFL. You can take multiple attempts doesn't matter. So if you're trying, keep trying harder and hopefully you'll get better at it. The next thing I want to talk about is that you should prepare your personal statement. So in the United States, when you're applying to dental school, the personal statement is very important. Coming from a country like Pakistan, there was no concept for per of personal statement for me when I was applying to schools. But up here, your personal statement makes a lot of difference. It's It's pretty much your identity card, I would say. This is what makes you stand out, your story. You have to convince them. You have to sell yourself in a, in a way that you convince them that you're going to be a good student and you're worthy of this opportunity. So make sure you focus on that. And the next part is your letter of recommendation. And I tell people that both these documents and your application and resume should be coherent. It shouldn't look like this was made by somebody else and letter of recommendation is talking about somebody who's totally different and your resume doesn't seem to match these documentation because I give this example because I'm somebody who was in a lot of uh, community work. I, I like doing community work back when I was applying. So my personal statement talked about the work that I did in community and uh, the encouragement I get from it and in my letter of recommendation, one of the person I got my letter of recommendation was somebody who ran, who ran a dental, who ran a mission of mercy. So his letter was actually supporting my interest in community work. So that's kind of, you want to have documentations, letter of recommendation that kind of repeat or resonates with your theme in your personal statement. So these are some of the things you should look into. And when you're thinking about letter of recommendation, amongst at least you need to have three. I encourage people to get at least four to five letter of recommendations so you would have something as a backup. But at minimum, you should have three letter of recommendation and amongst which one of the letter of recommendation comes from your dean of school. Wherever you did your BDS, your DDS back from whatever country you did, the letter of recommendation has to come from the dean. Sometimes people mention that their dean is not present anymore. So whoever is the concerning authority or the current acting dean in your institution, just get a letter of recommendation from them because this verifies that you were a student at that institution the, once upon a time. So that kind of like gives you an authentication that you were a dentist back home. The rest of the two letter of recommendations, I encourage people that get at least one from an American dentist. If you've shadowed somebody, if you have worked with somebody, if you have done anything in the United States regarding dentistry, get one at least letter uh, from an American dentist. And one of the things I keep saying is that 
I see a lot of candidates like me who came from Pakistan, then they got a shining opportunity with another Pakistani dentist and they get a letter from that person. It's good if you get that, but I would encourage to go out of your box and work with somebody who's different from your community or your nationality or your ethnicity and get his letter of recommendation because that will show that you have actually done work above and beyond your own circle. You know diversity, you know the systems, and that kind of gives you a more well-rounded uh, credentialing. The third letter of recommendation depends on you. If you've done, like University of Indiana likes a letter of recommendation from a non-profit organization where you did community work. So sometimes people would get it from a community work that they have done from the director up there. Sometimes people get it from their professor back home or if they did a master's in the United States. So that's totally dependent on you. So your letter of recommendation, your personal statement should be prepared. And the next thing is when March start, you want to make sure that you have listed down the number of schools you're going to be applying. That's a very important thing. And one of the things you can look into, and I'll try to share it in the description, is uh, ADA CAPIT directory. So you want to see how many schools are there, what are their locations, uh, and how many seats they have, which one required a green card, which one doesn't, what the requirements are, go into their websites, read their requirements. For example, UIC uh, just want people who have a green card or a valid visa. Some schools require you to have uh, some extra work, like University of Indiana wants you to so wants to see that you have done C courses and you have done community work in the United States. So you want to go and read each and every school where you're planning to apply. Candidates ask me what's a good number to apply to schools. How many schools should I apply? My personal recommendation is apply to as many as you can, which you can financially sustain, but at least try to apply to 10 to 15 schools. Now, in Colorado, I had a classmate who only applied to one school, got accepted there, and she was my class fellow. So I, I know people who have this, uh, who are the luckiest being in the universe, and they just applied to one place, got accepted, and did their DDS. So, but I would still suggest apply to 10 schools or at least more. Now, the next is a very important point, is that, so... You did your personal statement, you did your letter of recommendations and get your letter of recommendations from your back home if your back home is Egypt, Pakistan, India, wherever it is. Make sure that you get your letters prepared beforehand because sometimes, for example, in Pakistan, you call the of, uh, dean's office and dean is on vacation or dean is not available and you're running late at that time. And you can't fly back home and get everything done and everything gets delayed because of that. So I would suggest get things done from back home really early so you can submit everything on time. The other important point I was going to tell you is that make sure or try your best to apply to schools as soon as possible. And in amongst different schools, there are two types of schools. Some have rolling admission. So rolling admissions means first come first serve. So as soon as you apply, they will consider your application. If you're a good candidate, they will put you in for an invite for interview. And some are non-rolling, for example, schools in California, UP, UCLA, they are not rolling. They You apply up there and they will gather all the application and when the deadline is crossed, then they open up the files and see all the application and send invites. So those are non-rolling admission basis school. So when you're planning to see that uh, you're applying to different schools, see which ones are rolling and what their deadlines are, because those are the ones you want to apply and send all your documentations as early as possible. Because sometimes uh, I had candidates, including myself, actually this happened to me that my professor submitted a letter of recommendation and one of the schools emailed me that hey your letter of recommendation doesn't have a signature and thank god they did it it was university of indiana who emailed me and then i had to ask my professor to re-upload it and send it to them and after that i emailed all the schools again that 
this discrepancy happened and my professor has uploaded a new one i'm just emailing you to make sure you received it or not so that's also one of the things you want to watch out for and it happens it has happened to other candidates which is totally fine but still you want to make sure you want to make sure your TOEFL score, your INBD score have been submitted to CAPED. It's on the portal, everything's ready. The other thing I'll suggest, and this is especially for people who are re-applicants. This is something I want to encourage you to look, look into, is that if you applied to schools last year and you thought you had a good TOEFL score, your application is good, maybe you did masters, maybe you have done dental assisting or shadowing and still you got an interview but didn't got accepted or didn't get any interview and you're wondering what should I do now. Here are a couple of things I would highly encourage you to do right now. First of all, if you're reapplying, make sure you try to get some really good CE courses. Either you can go to Stevenson if you haven't been there. There are bench exam which are courses done by schools like Pittsburgh has a bench exam course. University of Buffalo has a bench exam course. Uh, you want to try to do those courses so you can put this in your application as something new you have done. These days, I am seeing a very positive pattern that a lot of advanced standing uh, students, a lot of foreign trained dentists are getting hygiene license in Florida, which is a very good thing because I think financially it makes a lot of sense. So if you can go to Florida, get the license, that also shows a very positive aspect. The other thing uh, I would encourage is during this time, before before the capital admission start, cycle starts and everything gets busy, email the schools and ask them for a visit day, ask them for a day to visit them virtually or in person and tell them that you have high interest in their program. And you want to reach out to these schools, you want to read their website, talk to their students and email them and see if you can schedule a meeting. I had a couple of candidates that I was uh, working with. They got actually an email back from the program director said, hey, listen, I saw your uh, application. I saw your resume. How about we schedule a Zoom call and we can discuss about your application. So as a candidate, you can reach out to program directors, faculties and ask them, Here's my application, here's my resume, here's my TOEFL score. Can you kindly provide me some feedback how I can improve my application? And I know some people who got a reply from the program director, uh, one from UCLA's program director, and they said, okay, we can schedule a call and we can discuss how you can improve your application. And I told that person that consider this call, Zoom call, to be a mini interview. They are they are very... Uh, busy people, program directors and faculty, if they are doing a call with you is because they have some interest with you and they want to talk to you and see your communication and see in person what kind of a human being you are. So it's a very positive thing. So that's something I would also encourage you to reach out to program, visit them, show your interest because this is what differentiates the wheat from the chaff. The people who have high interest and have high energy will be actually reaching out to school and make the best out of this time. The other thing I can tell you is that uh, try doing more bench exam practice. Keep doing that because if you get an invite, you want to make sure that you're really good with your bench exam prep. You should be able to do class 2 scrum preps according to ADEX criteria. You can Google it, ADEX criteria for dentistry or for dental license and your bench prep uh, skills should be very good. One other thing I'll tell you, approximately uh, in the last years, there were 800 to 1,000 people at least applying to schools. And one of the things that can really help you stand out is how you communicate with the schools. And that was one of the key things that really helped me in at least getting my name in the right places was how I was communicating. And you wanna, what I'm trying to explain is when you're emailing to the schools, try to use very professional verbiage and make it very respectful and precise. So sometimes because we are coming from different countries, we would uh, be using a lot of sir, madam, and a lot of these kind of verbs and words. And I, I wouldn't encourage them because if you look at, uh, 
the emails that are used in the professional system in the US, they are a little bit different. So I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying you have to adapt to the US system and you have to keep yourself very precise and be very respectful for their for their time. So interpersonal skills are a very important factor. If you can master them along with your clinical skills, you will be, I would say, pretty much unstoppable. So make sure you work on them. And that's one of the things I mainly work with candidates. So in the past couple of years, what I've been doing is that I work with about four to five candidates A to Z. So I start working with them in their personal statement, in their letter of recommendation, in their interview prep. I help them communicate with schools. I try to guide them uh, which school to reach out, which school to email, and if they email you back, how you should be replying and kind of helping them step by step in the process. So this is kind of like a complete I would say fellowship kind of like a package I do with them and I help them throughout the cycle until they get accepted. So for this year I would be doing the same. If you're interested, you can reach out to me. You can text me on WhatsApp, uh, email me. One of the other thing is you can follow me on also Instagram because what I've been I'm trying to do in this year is I'm going to do Q&A sessions free for everybody on my Instagram where if you're a CAPIT applicant and you want some advice, you have some questions that you want me to answer, I'll try to address them in the Q&A. That way everybody can see it because cause of time limitation, if uh, sometimes I answer one person and then the same question is asked repeatedly. So it makes much more sense for me to be on a platform like Instagram where I can do live Q&A sessions. So and planning to do that and even in February I plan to do a free Zoom uh, workshop with everybody who is interested and I'll send some invitation like Zoom invitation for advanced standing students, uh, foreign trained dentists who want to be a part of this workshop but I'll go through with you in February how to master CAPIT, how to address your personal statement how to prepare for your interview and most importantly how to make your interpersonal skills better because their communication will help you stand out yes your scores your credentials do make your paperwork stand out but the way you communicate with your words your emails they matter a lot so these are some of the things i would highly suggest you to take in consideration when you're applying for the next upcoming cycle and I wish you all the best. And I would also highly, uh, I would be highly grateful if you like this video, if you subscribe to my channel, it will mean a lot to me. And other people like you would be able to watch it too. Thank you.